naked shamanism. Welcome to With Insights Radio. I'm your host, Iggy Garcia. I will take you on a journey across the universe through shamanism, metaphysical, and holistic. So sit back and relax and enjoy the show. podcast here broadcasting live on instagram on facebook live and then later to be on youtube uh, on youtube it'll you'll find me there at iggy garcia look for me and subscribe to my youtube channel and those of you who are online i want to welcome you to the show let me adjust my microphone here a little bit get a little closer so So we're going to start the show off like we always start off. We're going to start off with a a little ceremony, giving thanks to our ancestors, giving thanks to the things around us and all the things that are important to us, all the things that resonate with us and the things that are uh, viable and important to our lives and give gratitude and thanks for all the beautiful things that we have been blessed with. Of course, some things aren't always perceived as a blessing. Sometimes things are not always perceived as... uh, something good per se and so after the fact we decide that you know well, I really needed that lesson I really needed to learn that so okay so we're gonna light our candle here maybe there we go all right we light our candle damos gracias we give thanks to the ancestors for watching us protecting us walking with us, guiding us, giving us um, information and things that we need, and just being behind us and standing behind us and giving us that opportunity to share and learn. For many people have walked a path before us to create the path for us. So we're here because of other people's work and hard dedication to bring us to this point in time. We're not here by accident. There's no chance. This is nothing that was like an accident to say well i just appeared i was my my dad my mom had me by accident no there are no accidents there are no accidents so i want to give thanks to my ancestors for all the hard work if they were good or bad it's irrelevant at this point what's relevant is that i know that i can heal all their wounds and all the things that haunt me or haunt my family so whatever i is on my mind then i will work through that and then I will light my sage as well. We'll let that burn during the show there. Thank you, ancestors. Thanks for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you, angels. Thank you, everybody. All those things that you resonate with. <clears throat> All right, here we go. The good old smudging. We got some Palo Santo down there, too. That means I feel like we need some good old white sage. Mm. And if you have sage too, I would ask you, you should use it. All right. Thank you, ancestors. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today. Thanks for being here. So I wanted to um, kind of start off today. But just telling you a little bit about what I did today, what my morning kind of looks like before we get into the show. Um, most mornings, just like everybody, you know, you wake up, you you go through your rituals of stretching and putting your feet over the bed, um, just trying to get in alignment and try to get refocused and try to get your energy back into the flow with uh, this world. And then, you know, you do the rituals that you usually do, restroom water tea whatever but today i was in really deep meditation really deep thought really deep you know you know thinking about the things that really move me things that are are important to me things that kind of are in my life and things that i need to address and give thanks for and then listen to the messages that spirit has and when i say spirit i'm talking about god great spirit whatever you're in alignment with 
that's what when I say the word spirit, that's that's where my intention lays. So if you hear me say that, that's that is exactly what that means. So today I was in really deep, deep meditations, and you know I was listening for the messages that I had to share. And you know, there's a lot of messages that we get throughout life and our normal day, in and out. There's always something, something going on. And so today the message was pretty much about, you know, the ver the basic four elements. You know, you know, earth, air, fire, and water. Those are the very the principal points that the spirit wanted me to talk about today. And so that's kind of where I'm at today in my my journey on this podcast that I'm, I'm listening and you know it we're in a transitional stage in in life right now where we're actually moving from you know summer into fall so things are falling off and things are changing so it's no different than what's happening in our lives our lives are very similar they parallel the four seasons and all the things that happen with it and so here we are we're getting ready to move into colder weather uh, things are going to be changing be a lot of change happening here pretty soon there's also we're in the midst of a pandemic of some sorts that we are either in a tune with enlightenment with or we're listening or ignoring one or the other somebody's doing something somebody's either paying attention or not paying attention to it um some people don't care some people deeply care what's happening wherever you're at it doesn't really matter what matters is if you're in alignment yourself with who you are as a human being if you believe what comes out of your head, goes from your head into your heart and into, out of your mouth, that's what's important. So the other day, I was, what I usually do, I go down by the river and I hang out with friends. And I just, or my son shows up, or my friend Kate shows up, or my friend Sherry shows up, or Hayden comes by. And some of these folks are my students and I teach them. And, you know, a lot of it, a lot of the teaching is very being in the present moment being there and in observing and being in connection with spirit being in connection with nature and being in connection and so one of the one of the things that we did is we went by the river and we watched how the river flowed and all the aspects and the things that are happening in the river and so basically what, what i'm getting to here is we were in connection with water and water was a very deep element for us to connect with when we went to the dam and we sat by the dam and we looked at the dam and we watched and we focused our mind, the illusion, breaking down the illusions of, that we create in our mind about what things are, we begin to see things differently. We begin to see things uh, more openly with an open eye, creative spirit, creative soul. And the things that you see in the water are totally amazing. And that's kind of one of the things we were doing. I was teaching them to, to see life differently. But the thing was, I never told them this until much later on. They just thought they were coming down, hanging out, fishing with me. That it was just something to, to do or something to hang out with. And then eventually I told one of my students, I said, I said, Kate, you know, you've been in class with me for this whole time. We've been down here fishing or hanging out or whenever you stop by or if I stop by, whatever. And, you know, it, it's like a light bulb came on. And it's not that it's necessarily a class or a moment. It's just being in connection, reconnecting your aspect your water your fire your earth your wind your breath with nature and reconnecting those things back together and bringing them all back together and tying them all in together and bringing them into that space where you can actually understand what it means to be grounded to be enlightened to be awakened to be receiving the messages so the water is is well, water just told me just very it, to me as clear as day the water says i am life i am pure i am clean regardless if i am dirty or filthy i am life regardless because even in the filth of the dirtiness of the water i'm still creating i'm still supporting i'm still holding a vessel i am water i take any shape any form and over time i will break down the strongest stone or the weakest branch that's on a tree or in a root i am water i am strong i am creative i am an ocean i am a drop i am water i am powerful i am weak i am stagnant and i am flowing i am water i am water that holds animal life microbial life unseen life i give life 
I can also take life. I can also remove life and recreate life, reform life. I am water. I am deep. I am shallow. I am a wave. I am silent. I am still. I am ice. I am smooth. I am coarse. I am rough. I am dark. I am light. I am clear. I take shape. I am what I am. I am everything and all things that supports life on this planet. I am water. I am the cutter. I am the motor. I can cut through mountains. <clears throat> I can quench your thirst. I am water. I am the water that sustains everything. Without me, I and you do not exist. For with you not being there is just me. I am water. But as water flows and water nourishes us, it cleanses us, it purifies us, it cleans us, it houses inside of us. We have water. We are connected to water. So when you are in the presence of water, you are water. You are part of that water. You are no different than the water. You may perceive yourself differently because you look at yourself and you see a mass, you see this body, you see this physicality of yourself. And you perceive yourself just being a human being, a body. But you're more than that. 98% of you is, you know, water. No wonder you're in connection with water. No wonder you can feel the water. No wonder that you understand when you go by the water why you feel so good when you stand in it, when you step into it. It's because it's calling you. It's because without it, you don't survive. You can go without food for a long period of time, but without water, you can't go very long. And so the elements have been speaking to me personally. And they speak to you as much as they speak to me. You just have to open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your soul, your mind, and all the things that come with that. So many people don't open their mind, their heart, their spirit, their soul. And then you know what happens is they're not in connection. But you are. You are. Water. You are. And for those of you who are saying hello to me, I want to say hello. Welcome to the show. This is Iggy Garcia, and this is my podcast, 117. This is about the elements, water, earth, fire, air. So I just gave you a description of what water is doing, what water has spoken to me, as water speaks to you. Water is a lot of things for a lot of people. Water can be very powerful, very dangerous, very soothing, very quenching, very loving, very nurturing, no matter what. One of the key points that water wanted me to let you know was even when I'm in the dirtiest and the thickest of all the things that you see that are not in a, in a congruent alignment with yourself, I'm still water. I still hold that space for whatever's there in that moment. So when you see pollution in the water, the water still holds it, embraces it. But see, the water doesn't discriminate. The water just does what it does. It mimics. It, it molds. It creates. But then the water also cleanses all this stuff. But then, then the other elements come in and work through it and they work together. So now we move from water. And as we sat at the fire, not the fire, but as we sit at a fire, a fire pit, or we observe fire. The illusion is that fire is combustionally creates out of nowhere. The, but the truth is that what fire told me fire says to me I have always been inside the wood I have always been inside of you I have always been I have always been waiting for the moment to come and appear and present myself in the way that I should I am energy that is confined and pressed when let loose I can cleanse and purify the most beautiful things I can destroy I can create, I can create life, I can destroy life, I can cook your meals, I can warm your homes. I can destroy all your forests in a single breath. For the fire inside of us is calling. So here we are, fire, destruction right now. 
Is it destruction? Even if man started the fire or a lightning bolt hit from the sky, hit the fire, the fire has its purpose. The fire has its creation. The fire will consume. You know, from the ashes, things will grow. So here we are in California. We have these huge forest fires right now. There was a forest fires in Australia. So fire is doing its job. Now that fire has been released from all those dormant places, fire has been let go. Fire has been asked to clear and cleanse and, and trailblaze the way. You may not ask for it. It doesn't matter. It's what nature asks for. It's what nature will do and take over. Fire isn't everything. Everything burns. Everything melts. Everything can be consumed. You can burn. You can be consumed. You can be... The, the oils from your body can be used to light candles. To light the way. So fire is inside of everything. Fire is embedded in all the things that life has created. So, but so many of us don't see it that way. We, we see everything in absolutes. You know, it's just wind, fire, earth, you know. No, they all play an integral part together. They all work together. Especially when we're in shamanism, the fire is a very powerful medicine. Very deep power. So the fire is here to remind you. I am loving. I am caring. I am warm. That when I am pushed beyond the boundaries of disrespect, I will consume. As I consume, I clear the path. And I make things correct. I cleanse and I clean and I clear. Once that I am done consuming, I will disappear. And once I disappear, the Mother Earth will take over from there. So Mother Earth, now we go into the Earth realms. We go into the, 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 the part where Mother Earth, the dirt, the soil. You see, these all, all these things work together. They, they don't necessarily work apart. It, they have a symbiotic relationship. So now we go to Earth Mother. And Earth Mother is just here to remind you and to let you know, I'm here. I am big. I am strong. I am powerful. I spread my arms and I embrace you with my love and my kiss. I house the world's greatest gifts. The animals, the trees, the plants the insects, the germs, the bacterias, the human life. All life resides on me. I hold that space. Sometimes I am polluted. Sometimes I am destructive. Sometimes I shake and an earthquake appears. Sometimes when I shake, a tsunami appears. That I am Mother Earth. I hold the secrets of the medicines. I hold the plant medicines. I hold all the things that you wish to have. I also hold the things that you abuse me with and abuse this earth with. The oil. I am the oil. I am the, the poisons and all the things that you create from me. I am everything. From everything that comes from me. Good and perceived bad. Even the atomic bombs and nuclear weapons come from me. For that's how powerful I am as the Mother Earth. How deep I go. My roots go deep into the earth. Deep down into the earth. As I spread myself completely from one end of the earth to the other. The illusion is that I am separate. But no, I am all one. I am alive, I am giving, and I am forgiving and unforgiving all at the same time. If you allow me to be, I will be. If you destruct of me, I will have to cleanse me. And the only people who suffer are the things upon me. Global warming, global cooling does not matter. I will continue. I will be. You are the ones who will suffer without me for you cry and you whine yet you do nothing for me 
and you do nothing for thee. You sit there and you watch and you point the finger at the next person for not doing something. If you truly wanted something to be, you would actually do it yourself. Do it yourself. But if you do not do anything, nothing will happen. You will complain, you will bicker, you will cry. You will say things and you will lie. The Mother Earth is deep. The Mother Earth is us. The Mother Earth gives. And I will always give. Says the Mother Earth. I will always give. You will always take. But you will never replace. For when you disforest me, you should plant some trees. But you don't plant trees because you don't think of me. You think of me as something that is, as something that was, and something that will never, and can't, and shall not be replaced. But I am a living thing. I am no different than you, as you are no different than me. You are a human body that houses life like me. You hold bacteria, you hold fungus, you hold germs, cells, they reproduce. When you are polluted inside yourself, it's like you when you pollute me. So when you pollute thee, you become sick and you become very angry and distraught and weak. For when I become weak, I cannot give back to you the things that you ask for and the things that you need. For you will find alternatives in order to survive on top of me and with me, through me, together, we shall succeed. But if you ignore me, I will have no choice but to cleanse me, cleanse myself of the parasite that you have become. The thing that you truly don't see yourself as. For every creature that I have created, every creature that I have birthed, when it's out of balance with me, I will cleanse them away and blow them from all the corners, never to be ever again. So that's the message from, from Earth, her speaking, channeling her. She's very deep. So now we move, we went through water, fire, and earth. Now we go to <clears throat> the sacred breath, the sacred winds. The things that we breathe, the things that are in our spirit and our soul. Okay, so the things that we actually take into us. Without air, we do not exist. We do not live. It's so funny how everything is so connected and all the things that we are a part of. So the winds are here to remind us. We blow, we change, we can read. I am the wind and I am powerful. I am strong. For my brother fire, I can consume and blow. Without me, no air, you could not breathe in the capacity that you do. So I'm here to remind you that I am just as important to bring the clouds from the other side of the earth to this side of the earth. For me to blow a cool breeze upon your brow to cool you off. To bring you those clouds to give you some rain from water which has collected. I am wind, I am air, I am breath. I am the lungs of the earth. I am powerful. I am not seen. But the damage that I can do are just as powerful as any of my brothers and sisters can be. Or I can create tornadoes, typhoons, gusting winds, but in the same token, I can bring you the gentle breeze, the breeze on a hot summer day to cool you down, to bring you free. I am the breath. I am the wind. I am all aspects of that not seen, for you can see water, earth, and fire. But you don't know 
and you don't see me, that I move in and out of you. Through your nose, through your mouth, through your skin, through your ears. As each breath you take, and each breath you release, I cleanse and cure and seal you as well. I am air. I am wind. I am all aspects of that. I am the air that moves trees. I am the air that moves the sails on your boat. I am air that moves the turbine, the windmills. I am air. I am breath. For without any of us, you would not exist. You would need us all. For all of us have purpose, and all of us are part of the great divine magic that has been placed before us. I am air. So, it's pretty interesting when we have connections when when things come together you know when things are when things are in unison and that's kind of where we're at today the messages from the elements the four elements i mean there's there's other elements too but these four elements were very powerful today what they wanted to share what they wanted to give and what they wanted to you know bring about and what they wanted you to hear and what they wanted you to know because we need <clears throat> the earth, we need water, we need fire, and we need air. Okay, We really can't do without any of those, believe it or not. Because they all have their intricate priests, they all have their little, their little magic that they bring to the game. In this game, which is life, you know, which is the, the powerful thing that we have, is important. <clears throat> So, you know, everybody everybody has a way to express themselves. And, you know, the, the earth expresses itself very magically, very, very beautifully. The earth does things in a way that's very subtle, very beautiful, very nice, and very gentle. And then it can be very extreme. It can be very powerful. It can be very in your face. And it can be very gentle and sweet. Right? I want to say hi to my friend Sherry there from the airport. I hope you have a safe trip. Air is going to lift you up and get you across, bring us to Columbus. But, you know, that's the thing. It's it's where we, we resonate with things. You know, we have to resonate. The Mother Earth is very powerful, medicine. And all the siblings of Earth, you know, the, the air, you know, the fire, the water, all of it that works together and all works together in unison. It's super important that we do that and we understand that. These powerful messages that came, I hope that you heard something in there. I hope there was a message. I hope there was a nugget that you captured. I hope there was something that was important to you, something that that meant something to you as Mother Earth channeled through, you know, through spirit, through myself. I think that's what happened. I let I just opened up the doors to just let, let, let the things come out that need to come out. And she's been prying on me to, to share and to talk and to remind everybody of the purpose of why she's here and why our purpose is. And we have an important purpose, too, while we're here on this planet and while we're here. We're not insignificant. The things that we do together, the things that we do apart are very powerful. We need each other. Each one of us here has a big role to play on how we move <clears throat> this energy, how we move our ancestral energy, how we move us. One day we will be the ancestors. Remember that. One day we will not be here. We will either be remembered or forgotten. Or both. <clears throat> Excuse me. So our ancestors, you know, did what they did when they had to when they were here. My mom, my dad, everybody they lived their life to the fullest that they possibly could. Are you living your life to the fullest? Are you living life in the direction you want to live? Are you just letting it just happen? And that's okay. Happen works because in the happen, 
someone will lead you or guide you to the places you need to be. Because when you don't lead yourself, somebody else will lead you to the places you need to be. Okay, so when you put your hands in someone else's authority and somebody else's belief systems and whatever, they'll take you to the roads that they know. Create your roads, and sometimes it's uncomfortable to create your roads. It's uncomfortable to create your own fire. It's uncomfortable to create your own earth, your own water, your own air. But that's what it's about, being human. We label ourselves. All of us are labeled black, white, Chinese, Peruvian, blah, 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 blah. But in the end, we're all just part of the big clay. We're all part of the big, you know, existence, the big, the big earth, the mother, you know? We have heat inside of us, you know, our body. We have air inside of us. We have water inside of us. And we have the soil in us, us right here. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just crazy to think that, that we're separate from everything. That we're not separate from anything. We're not separate. We're in so in tune and so in, intrinsically connected that we forget sometimes. We get messages constantly. But when we don't have the eyes and the heart and the spirit to see it, we don't get them. Then we get upset. Sometimes we have to let things flow naturally. Sometimes we have to find a teacher. Sometimes we have to find somebody to guide us. Sometimes we have to share our story. So somebody goes, oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I got that. I hear that. It's so easy to just put, put ourselves in the hands of somebody else. But when you put, make sure you know who you put your hands, where you're going to put your spirit and your soul, where you're going to resonate, where that's going to go. You know, most people have your, your best interest at, at hand. And not to judge other people, but some people don't have the best interest in hand. It's kind of like Earth. We have to take care of Mother Earth. We have to do our part. If you see something on the ground and, it's, and you know it needs to be picked up, pick it up. You can leave it there, then you'd be no different than the person who left it there. You have an opportunity to correct the mistakes. But if they don't, if I don't, if I leave it there, then how are they going to learn? Well, number one, they're not your kids. Number two, they're your brother and your sister, so they act different. Sometimes we have to do the things that other people don't see. Sometimes we have to do the work behind the scenes. Behind the scenes works is super important. There's so many things. Uh, my friends, we cleaned up some little pieces and parts of the areas we go to. Fishing line, you know, cups, you know, whatever. Because that's that's how, it's, that's how it works. And not because the person who left it there was inconsiderate. A cup might have blew out of someone's car or off a boat or whatever. But I know the next time, the next opportunity I get, that if I can clean that whole little bay, that area, that some of you didn't see on Facebook, I'm going to clean it. I'm going to get one of those little pool cleaner things and I'm just going to clean all that trash up because that's how it works we're consumers and we consume everything but yet we just we just leave things and we lay it around and we don't and we don't take care of it you know we don't take care of it because it, we don't think it's our problem but it's our problem if we don't take care of it. it it becomes our issue if we don't step and make something happen about it you know we, we you know, the biggest campaign that happened in the 70s was don't be a litter bug. You know, give a hoot, don't pollute. For those of you who remember that. You know, I was afraid to even throw a piece of paper out the window because of that campaign, you know. Because that, they, they they ingrained in me that, you know, that it was so important to take care of my earth, my planet. But now I look around and it's like, it's crazy to watch. I remember several years ago I had a kid throw a banana peel out the window out of the bus I'm going what are you doing why number one you're not supposed to be on the bus number two why'd you throw a banana peel to it he goes oh no it's biodegradable it'll be okay but that's not the point yeah it's biodegradable but everything biodegradable has its place and it's per and it's place where it needs to be you know it's just it, the thinking is different the thinking is different hopefully we awaken now hopefully we we understand that we have to do better we can do better and when we do better, we feel better. We feel better inside. When we give it power and authority over us, it will consume us. So now we're complaining about climate change. Okay? And we're complaining about 
you know, the environment and blah, blah, blah. But then we're, we're blaming world leaders. You know, we should blame ourselves as well, not just the world leaders. Because, number one, we vote world leaders in. Number two, when they don't do things we do, it's at all levels. Congress, Senate, presidential, depending where you live. It also means the people in the neighborhoods, people in the environment, people who live in these areas also have to take care of the earth. You know, if you don't want to fossil fuels, burn fossil fuels, then don't. Your carbon footprint is important. You have to regulate it. You have to bring it down. Your consumption and how you do things has to change. If you don't recycle, then how do you feel? How do you think we're going to move through it? But I'll tell you a story about recycling. I have a friend who had a recycling plant. He says there's so much recyclable stuff, they don't even know what to do with it now. It's like they have like this overabundance of recycling. They have too much because we use so much. Isn't that crazy to think that they don't even know what to do with this stuff? Because they have so much of it? It's nuts. But I noticed though, you know, how fast just a family of, of three or four can consume so much stuff. And even even a, a person of one can create a lot of consumption. So what do we do? Where's the breaking point? Where do we go from here? How do we how do we move into the next phases of humanity? I will never discourage not to recycle. You just keep recycling. Maybe just put it in the right place. When the right time comes, we use it. But so what can we do? What is our part? What is our end game? What is what is what would you like to see happen on this planet? What do you feel that we need to do? It's about talking. You know, I'm not telling you to go out and create these big mass groups and organizations. No. It's just about talking with your friends and saying, hey, you know what? I don't like this. Let's just pick it up. You don't have to broadcast on Facebook and on social media. I'm picking up trash. Just do it. You know, this is the messages that are coming. You know, just do it. There's no, there's no, I need to be attention seeker to do this. Pick up some paper, pick up some trash, put some gloves on, grab on those little squeegee, those little machine things, those little what, those little extension rods. You know, there's no excuse. You know, there's a trash can right there in this filth. Now, I have been guilty not picking things up because of COVID-19, afraid, I didn't have the right, you know. But that's got to change on my part, too. I have to change, too. I need to change. I need to go, okay, well, you know, if I if it is COVID, whatever, well, I need to find ways to pick it up differently then. But I challenge you. I challenge every single one of you. And most of you that I know are pretty good at doing this, picking up stuff. But, do, you know, let's do this. Let's do this together. Let's work on this together. Well, we can make a difference on this planet. Let's make a difference in our little spaces, in the places we go. Let's let's do that. Let's see if we can change that environment, just the little environment that's right there. Sound good? Sounds like an easy plan to me. So living closer to the earth, living more connected to her, is a choice. You have choice. You have a choice not to live connected to her, but she will always... She will always live connected to you. She will always be part of you. As much as you discount and create and separate from her, she will always be in connection with you. Period. You can't get away from her. You can't get away from the air. You can't get away from the fire, the water, the earth. You can't, you can't get away from that. Because every day you experience that. To ignore the Mother Earth is easy to do. She will never ignore you. Because when she hits you with a volcano, she hits you with an earthquake, she's just reminding you that she's she's powerful. La Pachimama. Ma Pacha, you know, the Gaia. Ma Ma Ba Ba. You know. So be on it. Take care of this Mother Earth. Because this is the only planet we have. I don't know of another planet we're, we're supposed to go to or colonize. The only one I know is this one. This one right here in front of me. This one I'm sitting on. You know. Um, let's take care of it. It's mostly for our kids. Mostly for our grandkids and children. Because you know what? 
this land's on loan to us right now. We're borrowing this land from them and them from the next generation. And let's do better. Let's fix some things. Let's make some things right. So those are my messages today from Earth Mother. Those are the messages that she uh, wanted me to share with you. So we're here on Instagram. We're here on Facebook. We're going to be later on YouTube. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. and Just look for Iggy Garcia on YouTube. You'll find me there. Just look for my, my beautiful body. You'll find me there. And uh, it's good to be here. And you know, it is good to be here. It's good to be here because we have an opportunity to make every day special. Even if you're having the worst day of your life, you have an opportunity to make the day good. It's just choices we make. It's just shifts of energy. It's just ideas to see life differently. You have the right to be miserable. You have the right to be upset. You have the right to be sad. You have the right to be happy. You have the right to be angry. You have the right to feel sexual. You have the right to feel indifferent. You have the right to feel excited. You have the right to whatever. Because it's your experience. There are two things that you I, you will have in life. And your birth and your death. Those you cannot control. You have no control over that. The day you were born, you came into this world coming through the dark canal of mom. In the end, you take your last breath and you walk out this earth into the existence you create in your mind, which is heaven or hell, whatever, whatever you create, whatever you believe that is, that's yours. But in the meantime, in the middle, everything in between is for you to experience however you like. But people don't see that. People don't recognize that. People don't think they have that they're not worthy of that. Well, I'm here to tell you you're worthy of that. You're worthy of that. You're worthy of experiencing life however you want. And sometimes life sucks balls, man. I get that. And sometimes life gives you some amazing things. But my point is, wherever you resonate, your energy, energy falls intense. So wherever your, your energy is and your, your intention is following, you're getting that. You may not see it because you're so blinded by the, the intention you're giving yourself, personal intention you're giving yourself, and the, and, the, and the feelings that you're associating with that. And you're getting that. You know, I get what I get. I'm 100% responsible whatever happens in my life. Two hours late, two, two minutes early. You know, if I don't show up, if I do show up, and if I'm there, what am I going to do? I take responsibility. Yeah, you're going, well, he, well, they hit my car. Sure, they hit my car. But I take responsibility to fix it. I take responsibility to do something about it. I, I, I take responsibility to heal from that. I take responsibility. I, I can't be locked in that energy. That energy that drags you down. Because it's human nature to be that. Anyhow, that's our show today. The fire, the earth, water, air. They had messages today. So I'm going to draw some cards. For those of you who want some a reading, let me know. This is our card today, okay? Just say, Iggy, I want a card. Pull me a card, Iggy. And I know I did the show during the week. Usually I do them at night, but I felt like it was an important message today, so... Here we go. <clears throat> All right. I got the rabbit card. Okay, so rabbit, of course, is about fertility. It's about creation. It's about manifestation. It's about all the things that we think about. All the things that we rolls around our head. It's about inner work. It's about looks within. It's about all the things that, how we perceive ourselves. So rabbit's just here to remind you, you're here, you can birth multiple realities. You can birth one reality. You can birth all kinds of things, but it, you have to do the work. You have to do the work. Just like rabbits, when they produce a lot of rabbits, they have to do the work, right? You don't do the work, you don't get no bunnies. That's kind of the same thing. You have to do the work. So the rabbits just remind you, even if the creations that you create 
are short-lived, they're still your creations. And if you create something that's magical and it stays, then you know what? You're gonna get you're gonna get more abundance, more bunnies. So that's what the bunny rabbit card's about. And just you know, it's about preparation. It's about getting ready. So that's that's our read for today. That's our little bunny card read. So the basic message about rabbits just looks looks within. You have to look deep, physically, spiritually, emotionally, okay, and work on those aspects. The biggest thing is, you know, they're all connected. So if you're physically off, it make it may affect your spirituality. You know, you know, if you're your spirit too spiritually high and your body's sick and you you can't get in alignment. It's about being in alignment. It's about coming to balance, coming to harmony. In order to become in balance, you have to be in harmony with parts of yourself. There is no true balance. As much as people try to tell you that they're all oh, you gotta have balance, blah blah. Man. You have to have harmony. Harmony is powerful because it creates balance. You can be in harmony and be out of balance. But when you're out of balance, you can't be in harmony. You, because you're you're too emotionally triggered by the emotions that tilt you left or right. But if you're in harmony, okay, like the orchestra, and some of you have heard me say this, if you are the triangle hitter, bling, and you miss your cue, all right, who's going to know that you missed your cue if the orchestra is playing? Maybe the orchestra because they're connected to you. But the only person who truly knows that you missed the cue is you. Only you. And you don't go and just ring the bell at any moment because you've missed the cue. No, you wait for the next round. You come back around. And you find the harmonia, harmony. Ding. And then in that moment, you're in balance. You're just out of balance for a second. You lost it. Ding. Harmony and balance work very good together. Imbalance is one of those things that we try to move energy in the right way to help us find that harmonic place in our system, in our spirit and our soul. So don't get hung up that I'm out of balance. Thinking I'm out of balance, thinking I don't know what's wrong with me. It's because you're you're not you're not very harmonious right now with yourself. Okay? And you know what? If you're out of balance, you're out of balance. What can I do? I can't do anything about it. It's up to you to make the changes. It's up to you for it's up for you to make the changes. In the things that you want to see in your life. Nothing will happen unless you make it happen. Nothing will happen unless I make it happen. And sometimes we are preparing ourselves to make things happen. And that's what people forget. People forget that you have to become, you have to prepare and get in preparation mode to get to the place you want to be. And it may take you a while. And it may take you five minutes. Yeah, the point is, do the work. My friend Jan always says, do the work. You do the work, you're going to have some kind of result, regardless if it's the result you're looking for or not. Just do the work. Because if you do the work, then, then no one can ever, you can't, you can't ever say you didn't try or you not, you didn't attempt it. And so if you do the work, things will work out in the way that it needs to work out. So basically, that's my spiel for today. And so. We've been having these pop-up circles, these drum circles, um, because they're kind of fun to do. Just kind of spontaneously create them at the last, what, at least I give them a day notice, usually. And that's kind of a pop-up for me. That way some people can make it to those pop-up circles. But they've been fun. They weren't, they haven't been huge. They haven't been small. They've just been the right amount of people and the people that needed to be there. And so I'm pretty happy with that. So keep looking for the pop-ups. Probably won't be one this week because I'm just crazy busy with stuff, which is good to be busy and productive but either way go out there reconnect with the earth reconnect with water fire air you know you remember the last time you took a breath since you've been watching this show probably not i can't remember either it just happens naturally my super subconscious just works and makes things work my spiritual body my spiritual aspects my my intrinsic creativity all right guys I hope you enjoyed today. I hope you enjoyed the show. I hope you got out of it what you need to hear. I hope that it's 
the messages that you were hoping for. Um, so I'll be back here soon, shortly, probably in a couple weeks, to do another show. But I want to thank everybody for being part of my life and being in the moment with me and sharing and listening and taking time out of your busy schedules to listen and to, and to take in what you need to take in. I will see everybody soon. Be well. It's good to be here. Ho'oponopono, matakuyasun, irisikwi. Okay. Aho, ahu. And I will see you soon. All right, guys. Peace and love. Be well. I'll talk to you.